Hey everyone, my name's Amanda and I'm the Fun Size Reader and today I want to talk to you about Spells for Forgetting by Adrienne Young. I didn't realize when I, until I got this book and I kind of was looking through the front matter of the book that I have read almost every single one of Adrienne's books. Almost the only one that I have not read is The Last Legacy and I actually have it, I just haven't read it yet. So I love Adrienne Young, apparently. Spells for Forgetting is her newest release. It just came out this month and it is an adult book as opposed to the typical like YA that she has written before. So for Fun Size Book Club in the past, we've read books like Fable, Namesake. Uh, she has a Viking YA romance it's called Sky in the Deep. It is technically a duology, but I didn't like the second one at all but I loved the first one, loved the first one. So highly recommend that one. So Fable names it, yeah. So I've literally read like everything from Adrian. So of course I was going to read this book. Just kind of before I get into the book, I wanted to talk about this. I didn't know until I saw her message on Instagram and somebody else had responded to it. There's a misprint in this book and I felt really bad when I saw it. I I had pre-ordered it and so when it came I did end up getting a misprinted copy. I know she said that there were new ones going to print that didn't have the misprint, it was fixed, but her name was spelled wrong in the book. Really sad. It says Andrian Young, A-N-D-R-I-E-N-N-E. -N -N -E instead of Adrian, So I know she was kind of really bummed about that and I feel really bad, but some people love when there's misprints in books and they purposefully go get those. I do have some books that have misprints in them that I've caught. So if you have an original copy, look for that. Synopsis. So Spells for Forgetting is about this island and the island is a touristy place off the coast of Seattle. It's kind of known for its witchy vibes. And it is about a girl named Emery who lives on the island. Her best friend Lily was murdered when they were just graduated high school and her murder was never solved. However, it was heavily thought to be done by August, who was Emily's boyfriend at Emery's boyfriend at the time and because he was accused of murdering Lily he and his mother left the island left their whole life there behind and disappeared he was never convicted there was never enough evidence to say that he murdered her but now 14 years later August returns to the island to bury his mother and it kind of resurfaces this whole investigation and Emery really trying to find out what happened. Star rating. I could not give this book anything less than five stars. I, I literally just read it and I was like, this book deserves five stars. It deserves five stars. Just straight out the gate. Like the writing was amazing. The atmosphere was amazing. The story was fantastic. I can see why people would be a little bored with it, why they would say, well, I predicted it. But for me, like, I wasn't bored. I can see why people would say that, but I was not bored. It kind of just drew me in and kept me wanting to read it. I just literally did not want to stop reading it. But because of the, the way that the story was told, I kind of read it slowly and just soaked in everything. And it really made me feel like I was there. And so I loved it. I, I like I said, don't think it deserves anything less than five stars. Adrian is an amazing storyteller, amazing storyteller. And this book was no exception. Spice rating on this one was difficult because of like the the adult literature way that it was written. This was not an explicit book. So normally like my spice ratings are because of explicitness and this was not 
fade to black, but not explicit. So if I'm just going based off of how I've categorized my chili peppers, I would call it a two, but again, it wasn't explicit. It wasn't graphic. It was part of the love story, if that makes sense. So it was really hard to rate this one, but I'll give it a two with like my explanation. Kind of going back to spoiler free thoughts because there are some things that I do wanna talk about in the end, but spoiler free still at this point, people on Goodreads and other reviews that I saw kept re describing this book as atmospheric. This was, it was just so atmospheric. It was so witchy and atmospheric. Like that was the word that everybody used. It definitely was. It definitely was atmospheric. The, like I said though, the way that she writes her story, that I think is what was atmospheric. Like it, it brought you into that island, those people, like you were there. There was no doubt in my mind that I was anywhere but on Sertia, which is, I had to look up how to say it because it doesn't look like that's how you say it. I had to Google trans, translate, pronunciate. And Sertia is how you say the island's name. That's where you were. And you just cared about the characters, even though things were still mysterious and you don't really know things about them. As all of you probably know, I am not typically a multi-perspective book reader unless they're done really, really well. And this one was done really, really well. I never had a question of whose mind I was in and all of the pieces that you were given from the different perspectives they just flowed so well to tell the story. She dropped the right pieces of information at the right time. There was no like wanting to skip through a perspective. Like I just, it was so good. I just loved it. I thought it was amazing. And I would highly, highly recommend this. I did not categorize this though as fantasy. Okay. It, it's weird because... It has the look of a fantasy book. People call it witchy, which it is witchy, but it's like witchy realism. It's not like Harry Potter magic, like zoom, I'm gonna cast a spell. Like It's not like that. It's not like practical magic, like the, the movie from the 90s. It, it's like real witches. Is the only way I can really describe it. Like, it's a, so set in reality that, like, I believe that there are people like this in this book, but it's got a tiny twinge of fantasy in there. So, the only way I can describe it is fantasy realism. I do not think it is a full blown fantasy book. So, like, Putting it on my shelves is going to be really hard. I think I'm still going to shelve it in fantasy, but I probably should shelve it next to like Outlander, which is also fantasy realism because there's the time travel aspect of it, which is fantasy, but it's all set in the real world with real things and there's no other like casting magic. You know what I mean? Definitely fantasy realism. So, so good. So, so good. I, I think it's perfect for the fall. It's a perfect fall book. I loved the characters. I loved the story. And I just, I, I really think people should read this and support Adrienne because she's so great. Okay, so now I wanted to kind of talk about a little bit of spoilers, just things that I wanted to talk about in the story. So if you haven't read Spells for Forgetting yet, don't, don't listen to this because it will spoil things. So when I talked about the way that the story might have been predictable, I definitely did call some things in the story. I knew that when they talked about like what August did, it, it I knew he didn't murder Lily. Like I knew that and I knew he set the fire. So like that lead up and that build up to that reveal like was just confirmation for me because I already knew 
deep down like he didn't do it but he did set the fire that i think was predictable but it fit so well with the story and it gave him reason to leave and escape from his family's past and his treatment and all of that like it just all mixed so well together it couldn't be any other way i loved the detail about his tattoo oh my gosh oh, swoon like i loved the detail about his tattoo the one thing about like the whole I star she's special thing that I didn't really get from the book was why was she special? Like what about her? What about Emery was special? I don't think we really got it. Besides like she did have magical properties. So that I don't think really came through to me but i did love love the tattoo element like oh that one adrian just hit me so hard hit me so hard i did predict or suspect that lily was the one that snuck into the grandmother's house and the one who she was using a spell but the twist definitely threw me i did not at all think that she was using a spell to try to kill Emery. Honestly, that made me hate Lily so much. Like, I kind of like, you know, liked her throughout the story and you, you know, want to find out what happened to this poor girl. And I did think it was some sort of like dark magic, nefarious stuff going on. But when it came out that she did it to kill Emery, I was like, I'm glad it backfired on you. I'm so glad it backfired because that was your best friend. Oh, I just, that one hit me. That was the twist that I did not predict. And that one hit me deep. And I thought that detail just made the whole story just so much more like enthralling. Like you knew the town was kind of involved, but I didn't think that they were just killing people. Like, that was shocking. That was shocking to me. I did not think that they were just going to murder people, and they did. And they did it to save their island, which, I don't know. I feel like that island needs to be overhauled. I'm glad in the end ended the way it did. I'm glad that August and Emery got to be together. I'm glad that her father ended up standing up for her and saving her. I do feel like they're there needed to be some closure with like Nixie because she was like her aunt and she was involved in all of this stuff too. And her, um, her true uncle, I just, I felt like I wanted more closure than just them driving away. But I was really, really glad that they got out and the whole piece at the end in the epilogue where like their daughters knew about Sersha, it just kind of, brought the whole story together. It brought the witchiness to in. It brought the like fantastical elements in. It was just so good. It was so good. So people can say that they were bored and it was predictable. I don't care. Like I, I, it wasn't for me. I, yeah, I predicted it, but it was just really enjoyable. Really enjoyable. I don't know guys, this might be a contender for a top book of the year. This is definitely a contender. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Thanks for chatting today about Adrian Young's newest book, Spells for Forgetting. I will put a link in the description down below. And don't forget, you can also find me on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at The Fun Size Reader. See you guys next time.